The African Union has given the leaders of South Sudan one last chance to form a government. The country has been locked in conflict since 2013 when President Salva Kiir fired his then Vice President Rick Mishar. He accused him of plotting a coup. The situation escalated in 2016 when fighting again erupted between forces loyal to the two men. Sudan stepped in and mediated, but a peace deal signed in September 2018 has never been implemented. And last week, the two men failed to meet a deadline to form a government, unity government that would be. Now, in the five years of conflict, nearly 400,000 people have been killed. More than 4 million have fled the country and others have been displaced within South Sudan. It's not much, but at least it's safe. The town of Tombora has welcomed nearly 200 displaced families this year. Angelina witnessed horror in her home village, but here she has found room for hope. A village was destroyed. Some of our relatives and all the elders were killed. I'm praying to God that peace will be implemented for our country. Since independence from Sudan eight years ago, the people of South Sudan have hardly seen peace. Millions have ended up in refugee camps because of fighting between government forces and rebel groups. These are the men who can help bring peace. President Salva Kiir in the hat and rebel leader Riek Machar. The peace deal they signed is supposed to unite their fighters, longtime enemies, into one army. But a lack of funds has delayed that plan as they also postponed forming a joint government. I know the extension does not give you assurance about security in South Sudan. And it does not help to reduce your suffering. Something that has been bothering me for a very long time. We tried our best to explain that the permanent ceasefire is holding and generally there is no threat of insecurity. War has kept development away, so South Sudan depends on the outside world. International partners keep sending aid, but they remain doubtful about the political will amongst this nation's leaders. Until that commitment is evident, South Sudan's road to recovery remains rough. DW's Tommy Oladipo has done extensive reporting on South Sudan's conflict. He's also uh, specializing in security issues across the continent. Good to see you, Tommy. So, why can't Salva Kiir and Rik Mishar implement the peace deal that they've signed? Which of the two of these gentlemen is causing the problem? Well, at the moment, neither wants to be blamed for the delay. They're, first of all, blaming money. They're saying they don't have uh, enough funds to put together this government and to put together the army that's supposed to integrate both their forces. Um, as I said in the piece, South Sudan, because of all its troubles, right. um, has not been able to raise enough um, revenue from its oil because a lot of the oil production has had to, to stop. Um, and, and so it's relying a lot on aid from the outside world. Right. But even that, I mean, the world right now, there's so many other issues around. Every country is having its own troubles. They right. can't just be throwing money at South Sudan. Um, and South Sudan has had these problems with funding to the point where the elections last year, which was supposed to be held in 2018, were postponed to 2021. And then now you have this uh, joint coalition government that they're supposed to implement. Um, that's not in place. But apart from the issue of funding, there's still others to do with even just the two sides agreeing about, you know, the makeup of this unity army they're supposed to form, whose forces are going to be where, border lines about who controls what territory, um, you know. Right. Into, so there's so much. Right. So, so, so the money is, is one issue, but there are various other issues, as you, as you correctly point out. What are we able to make of the mediation that has been led by Uganda's Yoweri Museveni? Because... It looks like the US and even the African Union is getting annoyed, judging by the language we saw when, again, there was another delay. Well, when this deal was signed, first of all, there was a lot of skepticism because these two men have signed deals in the past. We're going back as far as 2013, when right. they've been signing deals and breaking them. Uh, and so this deal was signed again, and a lot of observers looked and thought, you know, this, is, this one's not going to hold yet again. Uh, but if you look at the the... the Apart from Yoweri Museveni, the president of Uganda, and other 
regional leaders, they have been the ones who have been most involved in trying to bring these two men together um, and trying to make it look like it's a local sort of regional solution to this problem as opposed to, you know, the outside world like okay. the U.S. Let's talk about the U.S. Yeah. Um, so the, the top diplomat in Washington has basically threatened action. Um, he said we will reassess our engagement with Juba. What does that mean? Well, it's, it's trying to put pressure on these on these two men to find a deal and get things together because, think about it, there's still 12 million people who fled from their homes because of the fighting, 7 million, uh, what the UN calls severely um, food insecure, which means they cannot feed themselves when they're hungry. Uh, so South Sudan is depending on the outside world and the US and other countries are saying, you, we can't just keep our, our cash flow going. You need to find a solution. Right. And that's a billion dollars in the case of the UN, uh, the US, right? It is. Right. Tomi Oladipo, DW News Africa. Thank you. Thank you.